Hello, St. Paul's. This week, I want to share with you about one of our ministries that has been quietly flourishing and growing throughout the pandemic. And um, in order to help me communicate with you about this, I asked our wonderful Children, Youth and Families Minister, Maya Little Sanya, to join me and answer a few questions. So I'm going to start by asking Maya, tell us a little about yourself and how you found St. Paul's and your faith journey. Fantastic. Um, well, hello. Thanks for inviting me to do this, Penny. Um, it's an exciting opportunity to talk about family ministry. I found St. Paul's five, six years ago on Yelp. Um, so I was 15 and, well, I'll backtrack. So I was baptized as an Episcopalian, but then we never went to church after that, like at all. Uh, but I was always very drawn to Jesus. He kind of seemed like this really exclusive kind of guy. And I was just really uh, interested. Um, a lot of my friends were Christians. And I was like, who is this Jesus guy you guys, you know, hear about, talk about, um, all of that. So I, you know, kept asking my parents to take me to church. And sometimes we would go to the Unitarian church. But then I'd be like, that was fine. But when are they going to talk more about Jesus? I was just so <laughs> into Jesus. And um, when I was 11, I started kind of engaging in some pretty self injurious behaviors. And my dad started taking me to a non denominational church, uh, just to, as a coping skill, which it certainly was. Um, but when I was around 15, I found myself really longing for a more uh, traditional worship style instead of the kind of contemporary rock music that was at this church. And so I yelped and my mom reminded me of my Episcopal <laughs> baptismal identity. And so I yelped Episcopal churches and I showed up. So all is well. Um, and I feel like my faith journey is continuing to be God, just bring me back into his embrace after, you know, those wilderness moments and transforming and healing and can't wait to see what she does next so well thank you um so you arrived as a as a high schooler i remember um we sent you off to theology camp when you were still in high school mm -hmm. um you were assisting um with our children youth and family ministry and then you took over just a couple of years ago now um, so have you do you feel like right. you've developed some priorities for this ministry would you like to share that Right. Um, well, kind of based on on my story of how I came to have this job, I think a big priority for me is um, that we cherish and nurture and recognize the inherent spiritual wisdom of children and youth for what it is, right? And um, really listen to what these kids are saying. And I think what that looks like is understanding that you know, children you know, there's a saying, right, that it takes a village to raise a child, but I also feel like it takes a child to raise a village. So I think uh, a priority for me is offering programs that really give uh, children and youth the opportunity to bring their unique spiritual gifts to the table. And the other part of my job, as far as the educational component, I think, is to impart a certain level of developmentally appropriate biblical and doctrinal proficiency to a certain extent, I don't know, that gives them the tools to navigate that inherent spirituality and that wisdom, that intuition that they already feel. And so I don't think uh, it's my job, especially, you know, I'm, we're all still learning and on this journey of faith to be, to give absolute answers, but rather to encourage inquiry and, and kind of say like, Here's our, your inheritance as a child of God, as an Episcopalian, as described in the Bible, as articulated in doctrines, as demonstrated in history. Now do with it what, what you will or what God wills in you. Um, and they can just run with that. Another priority, I think, so that's kind of the educational priority, is also encouraging um, a holistic approach to faith formation in the sense that I want to promote showing up as your whole 
health to church and creating programs that make it feel safe to do so. Because growing up, you know, there was, you know, for a long time, Sunday morning Maya, and then weekday at school Maya. And so what I want to encourage is um, offering programs that are like fun and, and silly, uh, that encourage vulnerability and um, make it safe to just be your whole self, not just your Sunday morning self, whatever that looks like, you know? Um, you don't have to be your Sunday best. And you can be your best you that you always are. And I think, um, I think, yeah, I strive for that level of authenticity. And uh, I also want to provide families tools to have faith formation at home to kind of expound upon that idea of faith formation extending beyond Sunday morning. Wow, I'm I'm really impressed by by the breadth and um, and the the way you articulate those those goals and priorities to to give our kids a foundation of faith and and their inheritance and to to free them to be fully themselves and then to give their parents their families tools at home as well. It's just extraordinary. Um, so, do you is do you have a favorite Bible story or scripture passage or or verse that um, you feel is sort of the foundation for, for your ministry? Oh boy, um, there's a lot. I heard that question, and it it's a challenge to think of one. I'm sure you can relate. Um, I think the most obvious, and this really kept coming up when we were. Um, building the the playground in the nave that we utilized before the pandemic but it is matthew or sorry uh luke what is it 18 9 when it's uh let the children come to me do not hinder them um you know for to be you have to be like a child to enter into the kingdom of heaven and so i think that goes into that idea of um offering opportunities for kids to show up as kids, but as spiritual teachers as kids. Right, yeah. Um, so tell us a little about what's been happening for each of our age groups um, since the pandemic began. Oh boy, yeah, Lot, lots been going on, um, really exciting stuff. So I'll start, I guess, youngest up. So, so with our kids crew, group which are ages four to ten we you know because we didn't have access to the materials um we couldn't do godly play on a virtual setting um so we instead shifted to a more which at first was, was really hard to understand what to do uh, we we meet every sunday on zoom now at noon and we kind of shifted to a more seasonal approach to model for faith formation. What I mean by that is instead of a, a rota of godly play stories that continue throughout the year, we wanted to kind of mimic adult faith formation, right? How there's these series that go on, right? Whether that's a series on creation care, exploring the Beatitudes, spiritual autobiography, all of that, right? We kind of implemented that model of these short term, or, you know, these seasonal series. And we've been utilizing curriculum, a lot of it from this company called Illustrated Ministry. And as the name would imply, it's, it's an art-based curriculum that is just really immersive and really exciting to use. And kids get materials monthly, whether that's through delivery or, or pickup. Shout out to Joanna Earhart and Carolyn Leaf for their help with that. It's like very helpful. <laughs> um, and these toolkits have the coloring pages, the craft supplies, some treats that they'll need for their Sunday lessons. And then there's also, I've been utilizing Google Classroom, um, an online learning space to post all of the, the coloring pages and all of that for families that live further away. So we've actually had families that um, live in like Denver, like my little cousins joining us now, um, LA, Hawaii, 
that they can download those or if they need an extra copy at any time. And that also, if a family's feeling like zoomed out, there's no more Zoom sessions, please, they can download those materials and do them as a family offline. Um, what else? We also try to offer monthly events um, just to supplement our time together and involve parents in that process. So we've had the Halloween parade. That was really fun. Um, baking cookies on Zoom. Um, we're have an upcoming Ratatouille movie night, stuff like that. And then, yeah. Oh, and then we had the pageant. Oh, that was so much fun. That was so good. Um, and then with youth crew, which is ages 11 to 18, pretty early on in the pandemic, Charlotte Pressler and I from Christ Church Coronado combined forces and youth crew had previously been meeting at, at noon hour at the cathedral uh, on Sundays, but now we meet Tuesday evenings at 630 and that has been working out so well, that partnership in ministry, because we have half the work, you know, we, we split the responsibility and double the kids each. Um, so we have an average of 10 kids usually per session. So that makes, you know, our youth group, which was, you know, two to four, like two kids, now 10 kids, right? So on average, we have about four kids from St. Paul's and six from Christ Church. Um, and then we've also, in July, we launched a Dismantling Racism series for six weeks. I am the trained facilitator for that program in the diocese. I was uh, trained at the Absalom Jones Center uh, for Racial Healing in Atlanta last January when we went to Rooted in Jesus, that conference, which is seems so far away. Um, and that's been an amazing series. The huge problem, well, like it was a challenge, is converting this in-person curriculum to the digital sphere, but that worked out. So we are currently um, in the pro in the second iteration of that series, which is really exciting. And just like Kids Crew, we try to offer those monthly events. Um, when the numbers weren't as bad, we did a social distance bonfire. Uh, we've done virtual trivia nights, that kind of thing. Um, and then the parents. So we had been talking for a very long time, pre-pandemic, of forming some sort of parent small group. Um, and we did it in July of this year. So that was really exciting to see that come to fruition. Um, and so parents meet monthly on the fourth Sunday of the month to, usually it consists of a check-in, mutual kind of sharing of of how it's been going, and then followed by a short worship service uh, in evening prayer, the Book of Common Prayer. So it's an opportunity to offer mutual support and, and worship together, uh, which is exciting. I feel like that's everything. Maya, tell us about the numbers um, of, the, the, of participation compared to maybe a year ago. I've been really, you know, pleasantly surprised by um, not only increased attendance, but also just engagement. I think um, before with our kids crew, for example, we had, you know, it ranged wildly from, you know, you'd have one kid in godly play and then suddenly you'd have seven and then three, but they'd all be different kids, right? So there wasn't that necessarily that, that buy-in or perhaps consistency um, that would reflect buy-in from families. Um, but now we have a very core group of, you know, eight to 10 kids, which for me is so exciting that we're seeing, you know, the kids that are just, that we're in relationship with and are building community with every week. Um, we've also have four more kids from our MISA service coming consistently, which, um, you know, a year ago we didn't, we didn't have that. So, um, that's really, really cool to have um, their, their attendance and presence. Um, and then with the youth crew, it's kind of the same story, right? Where we'd, it would fluctuate one to like four or five max, um, but them being kind of the different kids. And now it's a consistent group um, 
you know, buying in and, and attending and stuff. So that's really exciting. It's, it's a real success story um, to, to hear how you've, you've built this um, through consistency and, and, and your creativity um, and um, being able to adapt. I mean, you're, you're a digital native and that mm -hmm. must help a little bit. Um, but, and, and to bring, to bring the, the Spanish speaking group in as well. Um, so, I mean, you have, you have some bilingual stuff going on, I think, don't you? Um, so it's, 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 it's one of the places where we can, um, we can bring our, our Anglo and Latino congregation together. Um, and that's such an important thing to do. Um, it's just, it's wonderful to hear about this. So um, what comes next? Do you have plans for the ministry um, looking forward? Uh, plans as far as plans can go in the time, <laughs> in, in the time we're, we're, we're in. Um, I, I've been okay with virtual programming. You know, I miss Eucharist. I miss seeing people in person, but I could stay here for a bit as far as, um, you know, continuing this. But I imagine that when we start to transition to in-person services, I think family ministry is going to be a couple steps behind that. Um, mainly because we do have kids that are for, don't live in San Diego and to just kind of shut off virtual programming. Um, I, I want to kind of transition a bit more slowly. And also parents, of course, might feel many different ways about their child's, um, you know, safety and I'm coming back. And uh, yeah, it's been, so I think it'll be a transition. Uh, and perhaps we'll continue to offer our those one off programs virtually, right, those, those special events uh, in the kind of more immediate future. Um, I'm really looking forward to these continuing these uh, series, these um, you know small little programs with the kids crew, uh, planning intergenerational offerings that we had started to do uh, when we were you know in person, and it's been kind of harder to figure that out virtually. But I hope to develop that. And with the youth, I'm really loving the collaboration with other parishes and with the diocese on youth programming. And I really do feel like diocesan collaboration, not just with family ministry, but with many other ministries, um, really is a, an exciting process, um, prospect, uh, especially as we have our uh, revival coming up in December. And so youth from the Dismantling Racism series and the youth that we sent to the virtual diocesan convention um, are planning a racial pilgrimage sites to do and to research, and that's really exciting. Wow, that's that's super. Um, so you, you mentioned uh, Joanna and Carolyn as uh, being really helpful and supportive. How how can the broader cathedral community help and support you? Because this this is a ministry that's quietly going along, being successful. <laughs> um, but I think a lot of people until now maybe didn't realize that it was it was going. So how how can other people get involved? Well, we have monthly um, family ministry committee meetings that are open uh, every the first Tuesday of every month at four. Um, and that is an opportunity to get the most up to date information on what's going on, um, whether that's there's many ways to help. So uh, maybe that's boosting communications and sending it to people, you know, that might be interested. Um, maybe it's delivering toolkits or helping with pickup um, or, you know, talking about like a, hosting a virtual event of some kind. That would be really great as well. Great. Well, I, I hope that you'll get lots of offers of help. Um, and I'm looking forward to the special family service on Ash Wednesday, um, oh, great, which I know yes. we're going to do via Zoom at uh, is it four o'clock on Ash Wednesday. Um, yes. I'm, I'm looking forward to being a part of that. Maya, you're, you're a, um, a gifted theologian and a minister. Um, it, you must have big plans for your future. I mean, here you are doing full-time college and you're working for us half-time, I think now, maybe more. Um, so what, what, do you have any idea what lies in your future? Uh, <laughs> so I'm currently embarking on my uh, my junior year at San Diego State, and I'm majoring in religious studies, um, predictable, and minoring in social work. And I feel quite drawn to 
continuing ministry, whatever that looks like, whether that's lay ministry or um, ordained, uh, but also working, um, you know, in social work, I'm extremely passionate about, um, you know, ending mass incarceration and, and, and the justice system and, and children and youth. So something that intersects with all of that. And I don't think that's too, uh, too far of a reach. I think they all have very similar qualities, um, ministry and, and social work. Well, I think whatever you set out to do, you're going to do it. Um, and and I hope that you'll always be able to count on the cathedral community to be here to support you. Um, and we'll, you know, we'll do whatever, whatever it takes to support you in this. Thank you for the work you do with our kids and our families. I know that it's very much appreciated. And uh, we've struggled with family ministry for years and uh, and you've, you've found a way to, uh, to have it flourish during this very difficult time. So thank you and congratulations. And, well, thank um, you, Penny. Look forward to the, yeah, I look forward to the future. Um, so um, for our viewers of St. Paul's Cathedral, uh, thank you for watching once again and see you on Sunday. Bye everyone. Thank you, Penny.